Okay, another book review. Lord Brocktree by Brian Jakes. Well, the late Brian Jakes. Basically, it is the oldest tale of Redwall canonically. It tells of the founding of the Long Patrol, Lord Brocktree's coming to the Mountain of Salamandastrin, his fight against the Wildcat Unget turn, and basically it lays down the groundwork for what is to come. One of the the way he wrote, I think I've mentioned this before in probably Rackety Tam, is he kind of has a lull between the books. Some books are kind of bland. There's like three or four books that'll be, like three books that'll be really bland, and then it'll pick up, and then it'll drop again. That was kind of the Red Wall saga for me. And this is one of the better ones early on. Like this, Martin the Warrior and Moss Flower are good. And then Legend of Luke's okay. And then from there on, it just kind of goes down, picks back up around the Bellmaker. Uh, drops back down. Yeah, you, I could go into it more, but I don't really want to. As the oldest canonical, I figured I'd do this first. Well, next. I already did Rackety Tam because that was my first real book. That was the first real book I ever read. So now I'm going to win with the Red Bull Saga. I'm going to do the rest of them canonically. And this is what I'm going to do now. Um, if I can find a story. Symphos, Symphos, or whatever you want to call it, in here, which I doubt there is, because this is not the kind of book to have it. I would read it to you, but basically, Lord Brocktree here has visions of the mountain. His father, Lord Stonepaw, is in trouble, and on get turn here, is invading the mountain with his army of blue hordes. And basically, it's a race to claim the mountain. Who gets it first? Um, I think there actually might be a small one in here, but no. Uh, no. So, with that being said, it's also in memory of Gary Ryan, a great singer and a good friend. That's what it at least says in, like, all Redwall books. It's got its map, something I really like. And right off the bat, we get in with the poetry, or song, whichever one you want to call it which is, again, another great reason for the Redwall series. I am the teller of tales. Gaze into the fire with me, for I know of the Badger Lords and their mountain by the sea. Tis of a fearsome warrior full of fate and destiny, who followed dreams along strange paths unknown to such as we. This Badger Lord was fearless, as all who followed him knew, and the hair he befriended, why she was as young as you, but no less bold or courageous, full of valor and strong of heart. I, young uns like you, true good and true, may stand to take their part. So here is my story, may it bring some smiles, and a tear or so. It happened once upon a time, far away and long ago. Outside the winter's night wind knee, knees and wails, come listen to me, the teller of tales. You know, this book did make me laugh, but I don't think it ever made me cry. It made me sad, because, like with all good Redwall books, good characters who were built up do die. And, you know, I think the only Redwall book that ever actually made me cry was Tagaron. And that's an impressive feat, because it's really hard to get me to cry for any medium of fiction. Real life, uh, real life drama, you can get me crying. Fiction, <laughs> never gonna happen. So, yeah, back to Lord Brock Tree. You know, I'm just kind of looking through it. Smelling it. This is an old... <coughs> okay. Never smell old books. <coughs> that was not... That was that was a bad idea. I'll admit it. I'll be the first in, to admit this book is old and should not be sniffed. Now, I, I guess I'll just try and find you something to read. To, uh... Yeah, uh, moving on, <sighs> I, I dog-eared this page right here at one time, which means I either liked it, or this is where I stopped for a night. Uh, oh, that's plot relevant. Major plot relevant. Ah, here's something I dog-eared. Dottie whacked the paddle forcefully with her paw and flattened the bump completely. She also stunned Ermie, much to everyone, every beast's relief. Brocktree and Ruff had climbed aboard, and now they sailed on downstream with Dottie admonishing them. I'm surprised at you, Ruff, deserting me like that. What? But as far 
But as for you, sir, it comes to no, as no surprise. Let me tell you, I was beset by villains once before, as I recall, while you hid behind a tree until I was overcome. This is the second time you've left me. To it now, bad form, sir, bad form. I thought you rock tree types were made of stunner stuff. Seems I was wrong, though. What, what? Brock Tree dangled his foot paws in the stream flow, nodding. I can understand how you feel, miss, but we had our reasons. We didn't want to confront them until you learned a little object lesson, which you did wonderfully. What do you think, Ruff? The big otter saluted Dottie with a swirl of his tail. I was proud of you, Miss Matey. Missy Mate. You never showed any fear, and you stood up to him. I don't know why I'm giving him a pseudo-Scottish-Irish accent. Uh, that's the only way to deal with bullies. And we're... Inwardly, Dottie glowed happily at her friend's remarks, but she was still a bit peeved, and she let them know.